Hi and welcome to week 12 of World History 2. So we're going to delve this week into the transformative era of industrial industrialization, exploring the growth of industrial cities, the emergence of new social classes, working conditions that were present in factories and mines at the time, as well as the benefits and challenges of industrialism. We will take a look at ideas by influential thinkers like Adam Smith and the origins and characteristics of socialism and communism in response to the Industrial Revolution. So we're going to start by looking at the profound impact of industrialization on society. The 18th and 19th centuries witnessed a significant shift in societal structure due to the rapid growth of industrial cities. With the advent of machines and the development of industries, people migrated from rural areas to urban centers, seeking employment in factories. This massive influx of people into cities led to the rise of a new social order. The traditional agrarian or agricultural society transformed into an urban industrial one. Consequently, new social classes emerged, dividing society into the bourgeoisie, which comprised industrialists, business owners, and the wealthy, and the proletariat, the working class laboring in factories and mines. The Industrial Revolution brought about drastic changes in working conditions, so factories and mines became the primary centers of employment. Workers, including men, women, and children, toiled for long hours in hazardous environments. Child labor was prevalent, and safety standards were virtually non-existent. The work was physically demanding, of course. It was monotonous and often dangerous, leading to numerous health issues and accidents. The Industrial Revolution was also a double-edged sword. So on one hand, it significantly boosted production spurred technological advancements and improved living standards for some. On the other hand, it led to widespread poverty, exploitation, and environmental degradation. The rise of industrialism brought economic growth, but it also magnified, magnified social inequalities and strained human labor. Adam Smith, an influential economist, emphasized the concept of free enterprise in his book, The Wealth of Nations. So Smith advocated for free markets. Uh, he wanted a free market approach to the economy, promoting the idea that the market, if left alone, would naturally regulate itself. He argued that individuals pursuing their own self-interest would, would eventually benefit society as a whole. This notion laid the foundation for capitalism and the importance of competition in driving economic growth. So. In response to the harsh conditions of the industrial age, alternative socioeconomic ideologies emerged. Socialism and communism sought to address the inequalities of industrial capitalism. Uh, socialism and communism, championed by thinkers like Karl Marx and Frederick Engels, proposed a system where the means of production are collectively owned by the people, meaning collectively owned by uh, the government. This aimed to um, advance a more equitable distribution of wealth and resources. And uh, communism, an offshoot of um, socialism, you could say, advocated for the abolishment of private property. So it, let me repeat that again. Uh, if you were to make a distinction between socialism and, and communism, in communism, we could say that it advocated for the abolishment of private property and the establishment of a classless society where goods and resources are shared equally among all members. So to conclude, the Industrial Revolution redefined society, creating new classes, reshaping economies, and sparking new ideologies. While it propelled innovation and economic growth, it also laid bare the harsh realities of labor exploitation and social disparities, giving rise to new philosophies and movements aimed at rectifying these issues. So I would strongly encourage you to utilize BC while you study the material. On our Beyond Classroom, you have tutorials, 
activities, key terms, lesson objectives, all meant to guide you throughout the lesson, as well as self-assessments, challenging questions, and further practice questions for you to do as well. These will aid your development in the course, and those will prepare you not only for A2, but for the midterms as well, of course. And I look forward to working with you all this, week, this coming week. So thank you, and I'll see you soon.